Hey guys, welcome back to Friday Night Lights Movie Review with Marielle. You already know what I'm gonna ask you guys, right? Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Become a part of the Friday Night family. Come and join us every Friday and every Wednesday for our midweek review. If you have liked my content thus far, you really enjoyed the videos and the reviews, just go ahead and click that subscribe button. Also follow me on my other social media accounts, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. My account information will be left in the description bar. Go ahead and follow your girl. I will follow you back. Let's help each other out. Please share these videos with your friends. Get them to like it. Get them to join the Friday night family. You know what it is. So let's get into it. Today's review is going to be the movie Cherry starring Tom Holland and Sierra Bravo. And it was directed and produced by the Russo brothers, which we know is from the end Avengers Endgame based on the novel written by Nico Walker. So we already know what the video is going to be like, right? We're going to talk about our positives. We're going to talk about our negatives. And then at the end, we're going to do this wrap up and we're just going to say the greatest, the biggest takeaways of this movie. And let me know what you think about this movie. Were you disappointed? Were you satisfied? Do you think this was a great introduction to the Russo brothers stepping out of the comic, comic book superhero fandom movies do you think this is a great way for tom holland to show us his range please let's talk about it in the comments section below so let's just jump into the review first off let's talk about the characters tom holland who plays cherry and emily Bra i'm sorry sierra bravo who plays emily tom holland's um love interest his wife um the movie is pretty much based on the life of Cherry, how he goes from a college dropout to a army veteran, to a junkie, to a bank robber. That's pretty much the phases in this movie. They kind of did it as if you were reading the book. They had a prologue. They had um, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, and then the epilogue. So it was pretty much set up like a book. So the positives that, so before I get into the positives, positives, let me just say this was a great movie to show Tom Holland's range that he's more than just your neighborhood friendly Spider-Man. He's more than Peter Parker. He's more than just the young baby face looking guy with the high pitch American accent. I think this did very well to show his range as far as him as an actor not to say that I think that this was his introduction because we've seen him in impossible another uh, movie that he did that was based on true events as well as with cherry he also did the lost city the lost city of Z um, with Robert Pattinson and I cannot think of the guy he was the main character in Sons of Anarchy. So we can see his range in those movies. I know a lot of people won't chalk those up as his range because he was still pretty young in those movies. But nonetheless, it does show that he has range. I mean, we should have known Tom Holland was going to have range just at the end of Infinity War when he turned on those waterworks and made everybody cry and feel some type of way when he told Iron Man that he didn't want to leave. So right then and there, I feel we already knew that this dude, he has some range. Um, it'll also come to a shock that Tom Holland is like straight cursing in his joint. There's a scene where you, in the beginning, where he sees Emily, who becomes his wife later on in the, in the movie, the first line that comes out of his mouth is, when I first saw her, the only thing I can think of, I just want us to fuck her. And you're like, oh my God, Tom Holland, Peter Parker, why are you cursing? You said fuck? Mind's blown. I don't think it was, it didn't sound bad either. So that's also a crazy thing for me because you know some people, they can't curse. They sound real stupid. He did not. I think that he handled his first curse word line very well. Um, so um, Sierra Bravo, who plays Emily, 
She's the love interest of Cherry, Tom Holland's character. Um, as far as her, I don't know her from, from anything else. I mean, I probably do. I just didn't know her name. Um, she played her part. I don't think that, and this was, will be a negative that we talk about in a couple of seconds. Um, her role could have definitely faded out. She wasn't needed for the whole thing. Um, so, and then there was other characters. He had his friends who, um, just didn't really leave this lasting impression. Once they were gone, you didn't say, Hey, what happened to the friend with the, the wandering eye or the other dude or this dude, none of them made real lasting impressions, which is the negative, but I'm going ahead of myself. So let's talk about the positives. The positives, again, Tom Holland's character, Cherry, he did the part justice. I'm pretty sure the author, Nico Walker, was very proud of his performance because it was amazing. He cried a lot through this film and it was different types of tears. He had the heartbroken cry in a movie. Then he had the fear cry. Then he had the angry cry. I mean, and a lot of people, all those cries may look the same. But in this movie, I feel that Tom Holland did amazing by showing us that these were different types of cries. These were different types of feelings that he had through this movie. Um, another positive, I always like it when movies touch on real things that happen when it comes to soldiers. I mean, they didn't leave anything out with Nico Walker's book that when, you know, he wrote it. So they really focused on PTSD. Um, they focused on how hard it is for soldiers to reacclimate themselves in civilian life. They also touched on how when a soldier cannot reacclimate in civilian life on how much of a toll it takes on their loved ones, their family. And we saw that in this movie. Uh, we saw that his, his own family were um, struck by it, that Emily Sierra Bravo's character, her family was struck by it. I thought that part was, thought that was good. I thought that the military scenes from basic training to being sworn in to boot camp, I thought it was really authentic. Um, it didn't feel like a movie. You just felt like, okay, this is shit really happening to these guys. And we know if anybody knows a veteran or a soldier, or I'm pretty sure a lot of us do, we know that is very real. And they did a, the Russo brothers did a great job, I believe, in making the whole military scene of that phase of the movie very, very well. Um, another positive, I just like the way they they broke it up in phases. I will say that. Like I said, the way they did it was like a book and they broke it up into chapters and I thought that was really amazing. I know a lot of people may not have liked this. I thought when, you know, breaking that fourth wall, looking dead into the camera and talking, which you know we're not supposed to do as actors and everything like that, I thought it was good. I liked it. It wasn't overdone too much. Yes, he narrated through the whole entire movie. I don't think that part was needed, but I liked him breaking the fourth wall and talking into the camera and, you know, giving us a better understanding, kind of like setting us up of what this scene is going to be, what the scene was meant to be. I liked it. I know many people may not have liked it. You guys let me know in the comment section below. Um, I just think that that I just I liked it. So there's not many positive. The biggest positive is Tom Holland's performance. It was amazing. Now let's go on to the negatives. Well, okay. I didn't like that a lot of the chapters before they got into it, it was completely red. Like, I guess cherry red. Eh. I don't think that was needed for every explanation, you know, every chapter, you know what I mean? Like they definitely didn't need it. And I mean, it happens every time it's chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. It's, it's not needed. It was definitely not needed. The narration, I don't think 
they needed all the way through it because they did have him break the fourth wall and look into the camera and explain what was going on. So the narration definitely wasn't needed. I also don't think that Sierra Bravo, um, her character Emily, I don't think she needed to last that long because they didn't really show a lot of interactions with them. You know what I mean? Like there was like a 15, 20 minute scene where we got to see the dynamics of their their relationship, their marriage, how it started and where where it all went. I mean, I felt like they could have went in more on when she became a junkie completely because in this movie Tom Holland goes from college dropout, soldier, junkie, bank robber, you know, and then in the midst of that his wife becomes a junkie with him. We only see that one little scene where she's so mad at him and she goes, if you're going to be living fucked up, I'm going to live fucked up too. I'm going to just skate through this life like you're doing. And she started taking his medication and she started getting high. And then it just jumped from her being a junkie, from them shooting up heroin. Like what happened in between? Did it happen gradually? Did what, what happened? And I think... They fell short there. And then they move on where we get to see the dynamics. Emily ODs. Now, honestly, she could have OD'd. She could have passed away. And that would have been one and done. And I think it would have made for a better movie in that realm to see how he how he reacted to the death. I mean, I guess you can't because if they're going by the book, it didn't happen in a book. But I'm just saying her role wasn't necessary. The best scene with them together is she ODs, she goes to the hospital, he's crying, he doesn't want to tell her, tell the doctors what she's taken. He eventually breaks down and says, heroin, she's really sick, she's got to go with with withdrawals to, you know, get clean or whatever. And then he's sitting there in so much pain because he's he's desiring to get high and then he is scared for his wife that she's gonna die the mother comes out and says if you really love her if you say you're a man if you say you care about her you'll walk away you won't enter her life and if you don't walk away i'm gonna fuck you up and that's literally what she said i will fuck you up what a mom would say you know to protect her child i think that was like the best i mean they didn't give us enough for that and that's why I would say her role definitely could have been phased out. It was, to me, just, if you're not going to explore it, you might as well just get rid of it. Um, another negative, there was multiple characters in here. We know there's a lot of movies that people play the background roles, supporting roles, but there's some people, you, you remember them. You know what I mean? Like, you remember these characters. And, for example... In Spider-Man, the guy that was bullying bullying Peter Parker in the beginning and through the rest of the movies, you know, he plays behind the scenes. But we know who he is. We know he's a dude that freaking flips his collar up like this is the 1990s. We know him. He made a lasting impression. These other characters did not. I can't even tell you what their names are. Then they touched on this guy named Mr. Black or what Black Mask or whatever he was. They didn't really do a great introduction, and when they did it, it was at the very end of the movie. You know, those, it just, they could have done more. Um, the movie was two hours and 24 minutes. I don't think it could have, should have been that long. Through the phases, the chapters, like I said, they were doing, they could have cut a chunk of shit out. And that's just how I feel. Also, this kind of reminisced the Dead Presidents. I don't know if you guys have watched Dead Presidents. It was a good movie. It was had Lorenz Tate and Chris Tucker in it. Lorenz Tate decided to go. He was he graduated from high school. What the fuck am I going to do with my life? He goes into the military. He comes out of the military. He has PTSD. He couldn't reacclimate himself in civilian life, but him and his wife had children. He needed to take care of his fam. They robbed banks. Chris Tucker is the junkie who helps him rob banks. They all go to jail. Blam, blam, blam. That was very similar, like almost spot on to Cherry. The only difference is Lorenz Tate wasn't the junkie, 
Whereas Tom Holland was the junkie. They both robbed banks. They both had PTSD. They both did it to take care of their family and to take care of their needs. I mean, it wasn't, there wasn't this huge difference. Um, The hugest takeaway on the negative is that I understand and saw where the Russo brothers wanted to take this film. Wanted to take Nico Walker, the author's book, and put it on film to let everybody see these are the things that's happening to regular, regular people, regular, you know, our soldiers and everything like that. But every time I thought that, okay, this is going to take a different turn, this is going to introduce something that we haven't seen before in a military movie, it falls short. It's like they hype us up and then it gets deflated really quick. I I felt the desire on what the Russo brothers wanted to do for this movie. It just didn't pan out all the way. Um, And that's where it missed its mark and that's where it was kind of sucky because we all know the Russo brothers have the capability to show us amazing things on film hence Endgame being the highest grossing superhero movie of all time so we know they have the capability I'm not I don't think that they're they only need to stick to that genre I'm not saying that I definitely believe they have the capability of doing other genres Because they did decent in this. It's just that they could have given us more and taken out some things that weren't needed. And that's the negative. So let's talk about the hugest takeaway of this movie. The hugest takeaway is that Tom Holland showed us that he has range. He is showing us like, don't fuck with me. Like, yo, I can be out here killing the game. He's definitely a heavy hitter. He's definitely going to be somebody that we're going to see constantly. And I know a lot of people think, oh, he's just Peter Parker. He's just Spider-Man, blah, blah, blah. I'm telling you, watch this movie. I mean, it is a dud. It's, it is disappointing, but you won't be disappointed in Tom Holland's performance it was amazing that's the hugest takeaway from this and also we're gonna be seeing him in other movies that he's not the superhero I mean look he did devil all the time he did amazing so we know he has range we know he's just not Peter Parker we know he's just not um Spider-Man if you've seen devil all the time you need to check it out it's on Netflix and he has a couple of other movies that are coming out that is also showing his range so that's the hugest takeaway Now, I'm still with the Russo brothers. I love them. I think they're capable of doing such amazing things other than the superhero genre. So out of five stars, I have to give this a three. And I'm only giving it a three because Tom Holland's role, his performance was amazing. And that's that's what it is. It's a three. So... That wraps it up for us, guys. I thank you for tuning in and joining me for another Friday Night Lights movie review. As always, come check me out on Wednesday for the midweek review. I'll be discussing the Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode two. I'm so excited to see that. I'm pretty sure you guys are too. So with that being said, I love you guys. Don't forget to click that subscribe button. Follow me on my other social media accounts. And I will see you guys on Wednesday. Peace, guys.